showing up on uh, Wednesday night, which means trade of the week. And for those of you that don't know, I've been doing the trade of the week here, the webinar that is for the last couple weeks and for the foreseeable future. My name is Steve Gomez. I am user number three in the Trade Ideas database. So I've been around for a while, known Dan and Brad uh, more than half my life. <laughs> um, and just for any more information, if you don't know, uh, if you want to know a little bit more about me, I did put my bio page down there in the chat window. Um, so hopefully um, you guys are seeing my screen and hearing my voice and uh, reading my bio if you're interested. All right, uh, let's get started. Trade of the week, April 20th, 2016. First order of business is to satisfy the attorneys. Uh, the uh, Jimmy McGill's out there. For those of you that don't watch Better Call Saul, it's a great show. All right, um, you got to understand that Trade Ideas is a content publisher, and at no time should uh, you consider this investment advice. We are not registered investment advisors. If you're looking for uh, that type of advice, seeking an RIA might be uh, the way to go. But please do not um, take any of this content that we're talking about this evening as uh, gospel. Uh, these are just opinions, and we're going to go over some cool trades and talk about some past trades and talk about how to use the Trade Ideas platform a little bit more efficiently. Uh, next slide here real quick. It's always nice to peep in on Holly and see how she's doing. We have to measure her performance by some sort of metric. So we have the blue line, which is the SPY since January 1, just got back above positive for the year. Uh, and then Holly, the green line, has been outperforming pretty much since uh, day one for the most part. Um, so that's always a good visual. Uh, I want to remind people also that uh, Trade Ideas is um, is here for you. Uh, we're expanding our education and help uh, resources available to everybody. We've got a few different ways in which we really try and hold your hand and help walk you through because we know it can be a, a, a daunting um, type environment when you see all of the windows and all the tools available to you. So if you're not in the daily traders room moderated by Barry, you're missing out because it's free, which is the first reason free is a great price. And secondly, there's some great stuff going on in there. Barry does a wonderful job. I used to moderate a chat room, a live trading room, um, and I know how hard it can be to trade your own account and still try and have the patience to uh, help people with uh, their questions. And so Barry does a great job. Um, as you'll notice here online, it shows 162 online. Well, I can tell you that number is probably more than about 290, even 300. I think we hit once today. Uh, this screenshot isn't that old, but it's a testament to how quickly we are growing. I mean, uh, I, I, I'd love to show you our new subscriber growth, but I can't do that as proprietary. But just picture a hockey stick in your mind, and that's kind of the trajectory that we're on now. So the word is definitely getting out on trade ideas and some of the cool features that are coming out and helping people. Uh, we're just so pleased with, um, with the way uh, you guys are adopting this awesome technology. And again, I've been associated with, with this technology since uh, 2002. So I, for one, can see the contrast of where it's come from uh, all those years. And again, uh, not only the daily trading room, but we have uh, office hours with Jamie and myself, which is a webinar after the market on Mondays. We go over a lot of trades and share some setups. Uh, the QA demo, which was done earlier today by the CEO Dan and Brad, always a great way to um, be interactive and say, how do I do this? How do we do that? Um, and then again, tomorrow, we'll be back at it in uh, Jamie's studio with uh, Jamie and myself talking about kind of how things have gone for the week and maybe what to keep an eye out for and always a couple of good little tidbits. So just be aware that, you know, when you, when you, pick up this program and, and try it out, you know, it's, we don't turn our back on you. We're here. Uh, we're here for you for the whole uh, for the whole enchilada. We want to make sure that you get the most out of this going forward. So uh, this will be the agenda for today. Just another little quick market recap and sentiment. Uh, I'll go over some of uh, Holly's trades today and point out a few things to to consider. Then we'll go through the trade of the week, which was Yelp this week, and um, we'll talk about some targets uh, for Yelp. And I also want to go back and talk about maybe the past couple trade of weeks, where they are, and where we could adjust our stop losses and move those up going forward. And then I want to just kind of go through, um, do my homework with you guys watching over my shoulder, show you how I try and keep it as simple as possible and use the Trade Ideas tools to generate ideas. Because to be successful, um, 
you know, one of the things people have said, and I say it a lot, is chance favors the prepared mind. So we're going to prepare our mind to help us get a better chance in the market when things do pop up. We are going to know how to react. So one of the biggest challenges that we talk about here, trade ideas, is, you know, um, what and when, and I'm speaking about the market, what to trade, when to trade it. And I use this slide here as a nice visual, uh, as a reference leading a horse to water, but, you know, the horse is going to have to drink, decide to drink on their own, you know, when they're ready. But, you know, this ocean here, you could consider the 8,000 or so stocks that are out there in the U.S. markets, the vast ocean of markets, and uh, the man here with the leash is uh, the trade ideas leading you guys to water, showing you where to drink. So I'm going to try and focus today on keeping it simple because I do recognize that when you look at a desktop like this or, you know, when you open it up for the first time, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I mean, there really is a lot of stuff going on here. And, and we understand that the what and the when are really the first obstacle and the first challenge as a trader as to what to focus on. I mean, the market's only open for six and a half hours, but you guys know as well as I do, it's real easy to get spun around and chase your tail in these markets, you know, whether you're following CNBC or stock twits or ideas or people going left and right and constantly changing your attention. I mean, it can be a real manic attention deficit type environment. So one of the things I like to do is slow it way down. Uh, I'm going to go through my process and we'll get to that and we'll set some alerts and talk about the whys behind those alerts. But first, let's look at the markets a little bit. Quick note, I did change my background on these charts from the dark theme to the white theme. I've had a lot of people say that the white contrast really jumps out better. So for educational purposes, we'll use the white charts today. I'm going to go ahead and type in spiders like we normally kind of do and look at where we are in the market. Well, if you guys recall, I've been drawing a nice trend line along these lines for the last couple of weeks, and we went through that about as easy as I would have ever anticipated. That right there is a tell. The bulls are in complete control here. Um, looking back even on this consolidation, consolidation, sideways consolidation, and then a gap up and a go, that's very strong. I would not want to be the guy who's been short since down here. And that brings up a good, you know, a good point. I've, I've shared with Jamie and a couple other people, I've been reading a lot lately that the big money has really been setting up for, uh, for shorts, you know, for the market to collapse down in here. And they have just been gotten they have been just run over with a face-ripping market rally. And the way in which we just tore through that, uh, that uh, trend line with ease, I mean, with absolute ease, tells me that, well, okay, uh, we're going higher again. The first level is this level right here, it looks like. And if I put my crosshairs on that wick, the high of that candle is 211.66. So uh, we're probably looking at uh, 211.66 as our next level to try and reach. We've got product got close today. After that, the next level is going to be back here, which is going to be the all-time high, uh, 213.78. So that level horizontally, the all-time high, and this level uh, near term are two levels to watch where supply could come back into this market. But judging by the way, we have just bounced with terror and furor for the short size. Um, the bulls are still much more in control than the bears would like them to be. Thanks for the white. Somebody just said, "Okay, I'm 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 glad that uh, the white looks better." Um, so once again, um, these are our upside levels, and buying the dips and selling the rips are what has worked for the last month and a half. There's no reason to jump in and change tomorrow and start looking to short everything in sight. And um, you know that brings up a good uh, good segue: short everything into sight. Well, one of the first things I do every day when Holly comes out and we'll move on to Holly here a little bit, is pay attention to the directional bias. Um, I normally have my win percentage uh, sorted here by the strongest at the top, which today was uh, two shorts that came in, but there really was a uh, overwhelming majority of longs. And so, you know, whatever Holly's seeing with last night's quantitative combine running through the uh, the numbers, you know, the AI decided to only start three shorts on the bench today, and the majority of them are long. So right off the bat, I noticed that Holly seems to have a bit of a long bias um, coming into the day. Next thing I always do is take a look at what's going on on the morning's first few trades. Uh, West Coast time for me is 6.50, so the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trades uh, were long. 
going into almost the first hour of the day. Again, directional bias uh, showing up. I'm always paying attention to what's going on here. And more often than not, the market seems to kind of follow the lead of, uh, or Holly seems to follow the lead of what the market is doing. So uh, there was an interesting comment today. Uh, as you can see, we had a lot of trades, a couple of shorts. And let's go ahead and sort this, because there's a few different ways we can look at these closed trades to try and garner some information. If we sort the profits uh, just as they were today, and just quickly looking at Holly, we had a net loss of 48 cents today. So let's kind of dig in and see what happened today. Well, looking at the heat map, we can see uh, we had a couple of winners, but we had a bigger chunk of losers. And these losers all seem to kind of show up in the same strategy. You got what I need. That one was a loser. You got what I need. That one was a loser. You got what I need. You see where I'm going with this. And so that strategy had a rough day. It was really responsible for the difficulty of the day. Uh, if we look back here, we had five trades. You got what I need. Five trades, zero winners. Not a good day. A loss of $1.65, which more than uh, takes over for the losses of the day. Um, it's not my department, but I know that the guys in charge uh, of the um, input into Holly are probably going to take a good, strong look at that st uh, strategy and see if we still want to continue to keep it in the mix. But uh, time will tell on that. But getting back to a really good comment that came through, uh, not only in the chat room, uh, the live trading room today, but also in the Q&A webinar, was a gentleman who said, you know, I wasn't really focusing on the non-exit profit. I was always just focusing on the profit and what Holly's showing for net change for the day. And again, that net change for the day um, goes right into the calculations that I showed you earlier for the performance versus SPY. And remember, Holly doesn't have the luxury of getting gap ups or gap downs and getting a head start on the day. You know, the AI has to start from scratch, and it has to finish scratch. Every one of those trades is not carried over, so there has to be some sort of a time limit on those or some sort of a profit target. And this is where the non-exit profit strategy starts to really come into play because the most important thing you guys have to remember is this is not a black box. We're not presenting this to you as a black box. And for those of you who don't know what that means, black box is uh, basically turn it on and walk away. The entries are auto-selected. The time and force is auto-selected. The exits are auto-selected. There's really nothing for you to do. But that's not what we've built here. We have built a, another tool, which is, in a sense, an idea generator. And this idea generator, as we said, is playing not on emotions but on statistical probabilities. And so I know that everything that comes in here today has a reason for triggering, and these trades have a reason for triggering. And if they do, um, I'm going to pull it up and watch every single one of them, and that's what we do all day long. But what I want to point out here is, again, it was kind of a lackluster day on the profit and loss side, but if you'll notice, all these time stops, there wasn't a whole lot of stops hit. This one was a stop hit, and then, of course, these losers were stops hits. But the rest of these were all time and force time stop. You know, we had to get out of the, or Holly, I should say, had to get out of those trades because that's what was the design. But there's a couple of interesting ones here. Uh, for instance, this uh, PVTB. Uh, let's take a look here at what is different. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to sort the non-exit profits, and now you can see a different look on the heat map. A lot more profits than there were losses, and essentially a lot of these profits um, could still be in your bag if you wanted to take them home overnight or if you wanted to take them beyond the, uh, the recommended stop time that, uh, that Holly gets out on. So where was that trade that I had just selected here? PVTV is still selected in gray. Two cent winner, only a two cent winner, but it had to exit at a particular time. I'm gonna go ahead and click on this trade because this is where the coolness comes in. You'll see now those arrows have just appeared on our charts. Well, here's where Holly got in and had a little bit of uh, no pain, no pain, no pain, and then the exit time, uh, we had to exit. There's really no reason to exit this trade if you're a discretionary trader and you took it. I mean, it was a wonderful entry on the pullback. Uh, 40.93, it looks like, was right there. And I'm guessing this was probably either a 30-minute or an hour. Let's see, it was a 35-minute, uh, no, excuse me. Uh, well, nonetheless, it's either a 30 or a 60 minute. I can't recall the time stop on that one. But nonetheless, looking here intraday, great entry. I mean, the stock is in motion, waited for a pullback. Holly got in, Holly got in at 40.93, and the stock did not do anything. 
well, I don't see any reason to get out of this trade. And if you guys see a reason to get out of that trade, you, you can go ahead and let me know. But again, um, you could have put a limit alert in there or a stop loss, excuse me, put a stop loss in there and you know, put in a times uh, a price stop instead of waiting to get out just because Holly's getting out. Because you can see here, there was a reason for this trade and I can see the reason. It was a nice pullback off of a nice move, nice volume, great entry just the time wasn't really allowing us to let this thing breathe. And so this is where the non-exit profit and loss can really come into play and show you what you may have missed or, or what you may want to do next time a trade like this comes up and does not give you a reason to get out. Now, on the flip side, let's look down here on the bottom. I'm going to go to profit sort again and look at our worst four or five trades. Um, the bottom one baby was a 71 cent loser. Well, we had to get out, stop was hit. 52 cent loser in PDCE, had to get out, stop was hit. FOSL, had to get out, stop was hit. It, stocks really didn't do much after that, and there's not much we could really do after that. But, um, you know, Holly, again, is not only designed to try and find us alpha and bring trades to our attention that may be of interest, but it's also designed to show us the proper way to manage risk. And that's why there's always going to be a smart stop involved in these to try and not let these things get away from us. And, you know, as Dan says a lot of times, I heard him say again today, you know, what might look good to somebody coming in might not look good to the next person. You know, these, these are in the eyes of the beholder. But you really want to be pulling up all of these trades and taking a look at them when they are spit out and see if, they're, if it makes sense for you to, uh, to participate. All right. So... What I wanted to do was talk a little bit about how to make this more simple. And if I bring up the price alerts here, there's some stuff we can look at in the price alerts. Uh, first and foremost, I have only gone back to, I believe, well, and let's just do a sort here, create. I've got this current batch going through today by profits. Okay, so we've got all of our triggers on the top. We've got all the stocks that are still working down here at the bottom. But uh, the thing that really is most interesting, and I really wish I had this when I first started trading for the first few years to see if I was on the right track or not, is this open P&L slot. And so since April 6th through today, 14 days, exactly two weeks, this is this is what I've had on my uh, on my price list and watch triggered alerts for the last two weeks. I'm probably going to clear it after today. I don't like these things to get too old and too stale. Um, but um, just wanted to show you guys that if you're using this and you're not having a green P and L, um, you're doing something wrong. And this can be a great teaching tool for those of you to see if you are in fact on the right track with your homework and the homework that you're doing. And um, again, I really wish I had had this when, when I first started out because not only is it a great teaching tool for those that are trying to find their way and, and figure out what, um, what their method is and, and if their price alerts or if they have a good eye, if their price alerts are actually making them money, is for those of you that don't know, you know, all of this is shareable. And that I, I just can't wait to see where this is going to go. There's a lot of uh, a lot of trading talent out there that uses these alerts, and at some point, crowdsourcing and crowd sharing of somebody else's homework, I think, is just going to be an incredible value proposition uh, for those of you that haven't made the leap yet from TI Pro into where all the cool, fun, advanced functionality toys are of the AI, and uh, it's a lifetime license. So. You know, like Holly says, if, if you like it, you got to put a ring on it. <laughs> but it's only, it's only a one-time deal, and you got it forever. You just need to make sure that your monthly data is still turned on. So um, how do I set these alerts? What's my method for going through these? And that's what I want to kind of wanted to share with you guys today, to take something that just looks so um, intimidating, whether it's the market or whether it's the 19 different uh, alerts and, and top lists that I have on this page, how do I sift through this and try and find out what I like? Well, we're going to do that together. And I'm going to really expand this daily window so we can get a great view over the webinar as to what it is we're looking for. The trend change lubricant is really, really what I like. I mean, if you guys recall US Steel, this is an example I just love to use. We were pounding the table on this down here. It had that trend change loop.
lubricant factor, you know, before these candles came in. But I'm looking for stocks that are trying to break out of a, a basing pattern, and more than uh, than better than not is to have a giant short float on top of it. And that's exactly what U.S. Steel had was the short float of over 50%. And once it broke through these technical levels, uh, the game was on. The volume came screaming in, and these are the kind of moves that we're trying to find using the trade ideas technology and the AI stuff to help us locate what it is we're looking for. So I'm going to start with the trend change lubricant, and I'm just going to kind of go down the, the, the list here and say pass, maybe why I'm passing, or hey, that looks interesting, and why does it look interesting? Um, and we'll go through that. So I can try and give you guys some of the, the method that I'm using to try and keep this simple. You know, it, re it really is just a, a triad. It's the chart. It's the top list alert and then it's the price alert setting the uh, uh, the alerts because like i said earlier chance favors the prepared mind and when the market is on you know there are so many distractions if you can keep your mind focused and bring things to your attention that you want to see rather than going out and chasing everything down and chasing your tail like a dog to try and find them it sure does make this game a whole lot more easy so let's start with SHLD Shield. Why is it at the top of my trend change lubricant list? Well, because it's got a short float of 58%, and that is how I'm sorting my top list. That really is the magic seasoning for these setups that are breaking, uh, that are down on the year, but turning back up. And just real quick, for those of you who might get a little bit out of this, this is the simplicity behind an alert like this. It's essentially just three three simple filters. One has to be up 1% for the day, change on the close, 1%. Position and range, this is where it gets really interesting. The first position and range is a 52-week year range. And this is a position and year range. We're using a maximum value of not to exceed 35%. So in other words, our first time filter here is everything that is within 35% of their 52-week low. Anything above that is kicked out. Our second time frame where we overlay here, we're using a 20-day range, and we're doing the opposite here. We're putting a 99% value in the minimum category, so it's showing us stuff that's 1% away from making a new 20-day high, and that's the, uh, the second layer. And That's how we start to get these types of charts that are down on the year but trying to turn back up, and then when you sprinkle in the magic dust of a short float percentage, then you can start to get those moves like X or maybe even uh, Solar City, which uh, Solar City is something we've been talking a lot about. Uh, by the way, the Shield uh, SHLD, it, it had its move. Uh, I, I may have been interested back here in the consolidation off of that nice push. Where I was most interested in it was back here, and it failed. It, it went through its, um, I forgot what the deal was, there was some sort of news, but it was looking like it was getting ready to break out, but it never followed through. It fell back down into here in a no man's land of no interest in the last week or so. It's been creeping up on a big short squeeze. But it's pretty much reached its levels of interest on a very short time frame. I don't know how much more gas this would have in the tank. But let's say, for instance, we really do want to find a level that works for shield. Well, I would probably look for a pullback. And we do a pullback alert using the price alerts. I would look for an area of congestion in today. Uh, I think this looks like an interesting area right here. It's not giving back the whole day, which is starting down here, which is the breakout. So maybe this level of congestion might be of interest. So when we set a pullback alert, we just right click on the chart, create the link. It thinks I want to go short because the price alert is below the current price, but I'm looking for a pullback with an entry to give me maybe a safer entry. So we got to code that as a long, and I'm going to put this in capital letters here because this one can be squirrely. Watch the price action. So these pullback alerts are not gospel. They're not black and white. They're not written in stone. What, I'm, what I really want to convey is watch the price action if these alerts come back and get triggered. And I'm going to go ahead and do that because if this does pull back to these levels, I'm going to watch the price action and see if we can get a second entry to try and maybe participate on more of the upside of a, a big possible short squeeze that SHLD could have because it's at the high end of our top list here. So let's go back to our daily charts here. So again, I don't want to chase up here. I'd rather look for some sort of a pullback, and I use the intraday chart there to try and identify a possible pullback. Next one, Solar City. So we mentioned Solar City. Um, 
This one has actually been on the Trade Ideas radar for a few times now. We had a very interesting look here. I really liked it back here, but it couldn't follow through and it never even really faked and broke out. It fell back into no man's land down here. And then where I really started to like it again was where I put that alert right here above this congestion. Uh, I did that a few days ago. It's kind of hard to see the alert with the white, but it's there. And so once again, butting up here against, back and forth, back and forth. You know, consider this type of price action, guys, like a battering ram trying to knock down the uh, the drawbridge wall. You know, if you just chase it on a couple of green bars, it wasted all of its energy trying to get there. But when you try and catch these things beating up against resistance and creating a, a, a tighter range, that's where it starts to become interesting to me. So this one was a prior uh, alert that was set. And as you can see, it's on the price alerts, uh, Solar City. There was the date. There was the price alert. It's three bucks to the good. So um, again, I'm, I'm, you know, not all of these trades have been taken. Some have, some haven't. But this heat map shows me that the trades that have triggered, I'm on the right track, and that's exactly what I want to see. Um, so Solar City was uh, triggered, but I just wanted to show you the thinking behind that. That's the purpose of this drill: is to try and find out which ones we want to mark up and which ones we want to pass. Let's go to the next one, BCE. Well, let me zoom out a little bit. Well, as you can see, I already have an alert set in this one uh, at these wicks back here, but I'll tell you what, if it triggered tomorrow after four green bars in a row, again, that's probably an example of how that has run out of steam. So this is going to be one of my working alerts. Uh, let's just double check down here, BCEI, working alert, there it is right there. And a quick note, one of the other great ways to use this is if we just turn off the ones that are triggered, and if we just want to focus on the ones that are working, we can select that here, and then we use the dollar amount from the alert. So in other words, I can sort here and say, well, six cents away, seven cents away. So these two top ones, CANV and CNCO, which were set back on the 16th, they're getting close. So this is a way you can kind of give yourself a head start using your price alerts, which again, are only available to the uh, uh, premium subscribers. Um, it's a great way to get a, a head start on what might be coming up. All right, so let's get back to our method here. Uh, NSM. We're well, kind of in no man's land here. Uh, again, these are the same type of charts we've been looking for. Trend change lubricant, high or low here is good, uh, but we're still kind of in no man's land. I don't really see a whole lot on the interim that I want to do. I see a big range going back and forth, a big W. Again, I'm looking for those kind of charts that look more like Solar City did back here, flattening out, giving us a tight range where we can gather some more steam and some more momentum to push through another push. All right, Fit, Fitbit. Um, this one is close to the top because it's still got a pretty good, uh, it's been working it off. This number is coming down. It's down to 27% short the float, but there's still some juice in this one. Uh, this was an alert. Let's go zoom in a little bit. You can see I had triggered right here. And one of the things I like to do is look for just an area using my crosshairs where I see a lot of touches of highs or lows. Well, you can see there's a low here, a low here, kind of a high here, a high here, a high here, a high here. So that's where I establish my pivot points. The pivot points can be set uh, coming up from underneath, which is what this one was, or they can be set from up above and pull back to a pivot point, and then, like I say, watch how it trades um, when that does come up. All right. Uh, all right, so there's already an alert set in FIT that's been triggered. There's really nothing to do there. Uh, and again, this is this is my this is my ritual, guys. This is my evening homework. Um, okay, this could be interesting. We've got a big void up here at 47.75, but we already kind of went through and pulled back. This could be something that could be interesting for maybe a pullback alert. Um, this level right here of 40 uh, was a high going back here. You know, I'm not, I don't have a huge conviction on this one, but I'd like to see what it does do if it gets to 40. So let's set a pullback alert at 40. And I'm going to say, um, you know, I'm going to give this one a C. It's not an A++ trade. I'm just going to give this one a C. But we'll watch it. Uh, watch action. All right. HOS. 
And for those of you that uh, don't know how to scroll on the charts, I'm holding down the control key and using the mouse wheel. Uh, we've got a big area up here of congestion. We're kind of in no man's land down here. I don't really see a whole lot going on there. <laughs> big wick and reversal on this one on CLD. I don't really care for that giant reversal. Um, let's move on. Now this one's had its move, but there could be an interesting level for pullback. Hey, look at that. There's a high of this bar. There's a high of that wick. Those wicks are pretty close. That closed right there in the bottom of today's range. Let's go ahead and throw a pullback alert right there. I'm going to maybe give this one a B. And since it's a pullback alert, watch the action closely before making any decisions. All right, so we've set that one. Uh, ONCE mm, tried to go today, then suckered back and pulled back. I generally don't like that. I'd rather see it at least close around the breakout or above the breakout. So this thing was kind of a fake out. You can see a lot of these have kind of these cup and handle uh, river, uh, situations, or even an inverse head and shoulders, if you will. You, know, you start to see that kind of pattern. Going way back, I can kind of see this level as a level of interest. Um, these two areas don't really line up. And as we're getting down this list, we're, we're losing our short float gasoline for, you know, for short floats. Uh, anything above 15 is of interest. Anything above 30 is great. Um, but getting back to this one here, we, we could possibly use these two levels, which lined up perfectly as a, as a head start. But then again, you're still going to run into this level back here. So I'll go ahead and set a, an alert from below. But it's kind of a B setup. It's not an A-plus setup. Uh, I'll just keep an eye on that as a B setup. Uh, this one is kind of interesting. I kind of like this, uh, this saucer bottoming here. Put in a big, heavy spike low. and sank down into the abyss, but these saucer bottoms, you know, they, they, they can be interesting. So I'm, I'm liking this. It's, you know, it's kind of a, a stepchild to a, uh, a long range consolidation, but it's got a bit of a saucer bottom to it. One, two, three. These spikes right back here are kind of interesting. That's where it failed before. Let's go ahead and create a price alert there. Again, this is also a B setup. I really like this. Watch the action. I don't have much else to say other than that one. I like this. I like this one a lot. Um, I like the sideways action. I like this push up, and I like how it's slowly starting to move higher. And if you look back here, you'll see that we do have a prior bounce, prior support is now current resistance. I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, at the high of today's candle, uh, which looks to be oh down here guys this this area right here this box is where I'm getting my figures from so if I highlight the uh, trade ideas chart cursor at that the high of the day is 3277 again I really like this sideways action and then pushing up through it not pulling back not much give back on let me zoom in a little bit more not much give back in price just kind of moving sideways and sliding higher and we know now that this is a significant level at 3278 so we'll go right there I'll go ahead and correct mine to 3278. I'm going to give this one an A setup. I like this one because of the, uh, again, because of this sideways action creeping, creeping, creeping under this line, not, not spending a lot of energy to quickly get there. All right, uh, we're getting a little bit lower on this uh, chart. Uh, nothing really compelling there. Nothing really compelling there. It's just slowly giving its way back. I'd rather see something that's been building sideways, gathering steam. You know, again, this one's kind of done the same thing. If that's not a cup and handle, I don't know what is. But this is an interesting, really interesting pivot level here. You can see it was prior support, prior support, and then a gap down, probably bad earnings, and now it's fought its way back to this level. Um, a lot going on here. I'll go ahead and put a high above that one and just watch it. I'm being liberal with my uh, picks today. Normally, I might not set these many alerts, but I want to try and be as descriptive as possible as to what I'm seeing. Uh, we'll just call this 15 even. We'll go ahead and set an alert at the round number of 15. Again, I'm not too crazy about this setup, so we'll just give that one a C.
and that's what's really nice again about these these price alerts is when you when you do bring them up and start you know going through and checking what's working and what's not not working. I mean, this is about as good a feedback as you can get, and this is exactly how we're trying to extract alpha out, out, of, out of the uh, of the market and not get our heads spun around with every little blinking light. Uh, let's just focus on the stuff that we see. Again, I'm in a nice, quiet, calm state of mind right now. Not always that quiet and calm during the market. It's the way you want to be, but it's not always that easy to be. We all know that. So, you know, I like to try and just you know, use this time time to quietly look through and see what I like and then have it come to me in the heat of the moment rather than chasing my tail on stock twits and, and this and that and trying to pull up what everybody else is talking about. No, this is my time where I can pull what looks good to me and you can do the same for yourself if you have a completely different style. You know, these evening you know, sessions are really nice to give yourself a, a, a note to your future self of what you were thinking and seeing at the current time. All right, I'll do a couple more on here. Um, yeah, that's kind of interesting too, except for that one wick going up there. This is kind of interesting. But again, we've got these two wicks going way back here. It's much higher. Um, that's interesting too, and I've got an alert on that one, so I've already traded that one. So some of these keep showing up because they will stay on these alerts. So this one has got a green line that's already in play, but you could see my thinking back here. You know, that's exactly where I put that line. Pulled back, bounced, and then back above. So that one's in the money now. Now, I've got two of these alerts, these trend change lubricant alerts, because I'm not exactly sure which one I like. I, I showed you the configuration of that top one, but I've got another one that's a little bit different and playing around with a little bit of different um, parameters. So for instance, on this one, on the position in year range, I've got this one going lower. Nothing can be above 20% above the lows on this configuration. And then on the upside, trailing side, I'm doing a position in 10-day range instead of a 20-day range. And instead of using a 99%, I'm using a 95%. So very similar, but a different look here and there. We'll see a lot of the same, uh, uh, same suspects showing up on here, like Solar City is a duplicate that AAC is not, BCEI is not, NSMS. So, so there's a couple more names in here that can definitely pop up. Um, uh, Jose, I use the tr I use the short float because again, if you miss that part, the short float is where the squeeze potentials can happen. The higher the short float, the more potential for energy to push these things for a multi-day move. So I'm sorting both of these trend change lubricants. This one has the 10-day. This one has the 20-day high, and they're both being shorted uh, sorted <laughs> by short float. So some of the ones that did not duplicate on here. Let's see, is this AAC? Let's see how this one looks. Zoom out a little bit. This one's, you know, it's it, it's it's kind of like building itself a wedge. Um, you know, let's just go ahead and use the tools real quick uh, to mark up a, a horizontal line. And when you, no, that's not what I wanted. What I need to do is take off the crosshairs, highlight that, delete that, take the crosshairs off to give ourselves uh, what we're looking for: markup, trend line. So let's grab the trend line, and what I'm seeing here is kind of a wedge. I'm just going to keep that there, and I see it already breaking out of that wedge. Let me grab another one. So here's what I'm kind of seeing on this one, and it looks like the move may already be underway. Uh, we're not always using um, not always using lines, horizontal lines. Sometimes you can have a nice wedge, and I'm sure you guys have seen stocks that look like that. Um, this one may have some follow through because it broke out of that wedge. So I'm open to uh, considering uh, some follow through. Let me go back and put my crosshairs on. And we'll get it right about there. And I like this. I'm going to call it a wedge break, just in case I didn't catch that or don't catch it when it comes back up in real time. And that's the reason for setting a new high above today's candle, because we already have broken out of this range. 
All right, what's next? BCI, we've got a duplicate there, NSM, CONN, this is not a duplicate. Well, this one just made a 52-week low here recently and trying to move back up. It's got a lot of overhead resistance. I'm not interested. Again, not interested. Fit, that's a duplicate. CLD, that's a duplicate. We had that giant pullback. Um, we set the price alert for a pullback on this one. So again, that's my thinking on these trend change type setups. Um, Let's look at another type of setup because this is also part of my repertoire. And again, you know, for those that are joining late, we're trying to show you how to simplify a method and make it real simple to make sense of all these numbers that you're seeing because we want to extrapolate the easy stuff and bring it to our attention in real time and doing it in a homework type fashion like we're doing right now. So tomorrow, probably three or four of these are going to pop up on my chart. And again, chance favors the prepared mind. Well, that's what we're doing right now. We're preparing the mind. Uh, okay, a couple of new alerts. I haven't talked much about these. These are top lists, but uh, they are constructed looking for um, you know an engulfing kind of a reversal move. Not quite engulfing. That's not really the proper move. But let's just go ahead and highlight these because these are the bullish ones. All right, if you can see this one, we had a big, big gap down. All right, and then this one is starting to turn back up. Um, I'd like to know if this can make a new high tomorrow. So we're going to call this high right here, uh, 539, we're going to go 540, create that alert just to see if we can get any follow through tomorrow on this particular one. And then the next one was QRBO, this one didn't have as big of a pullback, as, as big of a puke, so it's kind of just right close to coming back into its range, not interested. What I did for this particular alert right here is I flipped it. And if you haven't used the flip feature, it's very simple. You take a strategy that you like, like the ones we just looked at, you just duplicate the window. And then once you are in the duplicate window, you go to configure and flip. And voila, you've got a reverse strategy slash alert slash top list than what we had. So that's how I created this one. But these are looking to short. And this one had a nice run up and started to have a red candle and didn't quite make it. But you can see I actually do have an alert set on this one for a short. Let's take a look at how that's coded. That is the one for uh, CNCO. And real quick, CNCO should be working. Where is CNCO? There it is right here, CNCO. So if we edit this price alert, you can see I've coded it to be a short. And I don't have any notes, but I'll know when I see exactly what that is. So this one's already been set. I've used that alert to set this one. Um, that's also interesting. I think I'd like to know if it breaks below the low of this candle and starts to fill that gap. That is a low of 1919. So let's go and set this alert for 1918. And it will be a short because we are looking for a breakdown. Gap fill is the operative word here. Uh, nothing really there, nothing really there. So, yeah, this one could be interesting as well. Nice topping tail. Uh, we have a gap down here. We have a lot of room to run. I want to make this my last one, uh, but you guys get the idea here. The low is uh, 555, so we're going to go low 554. And we're going to set this alert as well for a short gap fill as well. All right, so I'll take a couple questions, but before I do that, I just want to show you one more thing. For those of you that don't have the limit alerts, um, basically you're stuck to doing this drill and writing the stuff down on a piece of paper. And that's not as easy. I used to do that. Uh, when you've got a tool like this at your fingertips to bring to your attention and grab your head and say, hey, hey, you liked this last night or two nights ago doing homework. Do you like it now? And so these are the type of uh, scenarios we're trying to bring to our attention uh, during the bell, during the working hours. So what I'm going to do here real quick is use the sort feature for created. Uh, we have created a few alerts here on 420. Let's go ahead and undo the triggered. So I'm going to highlight everything that was created tonight down to here, shift key, highlight. 
this is the coolest feature of all is when you start to bring in the crowdsourcing and the crowd sharing. Again, there's a lot of guys inside trade ideas, outside trade ideas in the live trading room that if you could get a sneak peek on their homework, um, it's invaluable. And I don't really know where this is going to go, but I know it's going to go to good things. So share 15 selected alerts, copy all. That's now in my clipboard. So I call your attention, everybody, to the chat window on the toolbar, which is where I had my bio up earlier. And I'm going to go ahead and paste in and send the cloud link for all of the alerts that we just set. And you now have witnessed why we set those alerts and what some of the concepts are behind those. Um, just a quick note, when you guys uh, receive that link, if you have this functionality, hopefully you do because it's invaluable. Hopefully I've demonstrated that. Uh, let's go back to triggered and working. Uh, essentially, all you're going to do is just go to your cloud and load from cloud, and it will be there. But it's not going to give you any fanfare and say, hooray, you've got new limit alerts. You basically have to pull up your price limit alerts again and double check that these uh, time stamped dates uh, made it to their, made it to your limit alert. So they essentially just add to what you've already got. All right, so that's my story. What's yours? <laughs> Let's see if there's a couple of good questions. Can you share the bullish engulfing? Yeah, I'll be happy to share those. Um, let's go ahead and share those right now. Um, save and share to cloud. Copy all and drop that first one into the chat window. Bullish engulfing. Save or share to cloud. Copy all in the chat window. Good to go. What are your thoughts on Yelp? Oh, thank you for reminding me. Gosh, dang it. Oh, trade of the week. We haven't even talked about it. Thank you so much. I'm glad I looked over there. Let's start with this week's trade of the week and what I'm liking about it. I'm really liking these bottom tails. Uh, over the weekend, uh, this was on the short list. Uh, we talked to the guys, and we all agreed Yelp should be a good call. It hadn't had too much run. It's Wednesday, yesterday, Monday. So. Uh, the trade was essentially live at, I believe, uh, 2130 on Monday, and we tried real hard to get that out as soon as possible. Let me tell you what the thinking was here for the stop. Uh, we're using this candle, not this one, not this one, but we're going back a couple days, and again, I really like these wicks on the candles. We're going back to this day back here thinking, you know, they might try and take out the low of this day. The algos and the stop hunters might try and take the low out on this day, but three days, I mean, come on. We got, we got to put our stop somewhere and, and manage our risk somewhere. So that's where the current stop is. It's just below 19, uh, below 20, excuse me. It's in the 19s. And I'm really liking how every day you see this, it's a great recovery off the lows. Wick, wick, wick. Let me show you one more thing that I wanted to talk about on the uh, Yelp chart. And that is how they're trying to really shake everybody out. You guys have heard me talk about the first half hour of the day. That's where all the nastiness happens. First half hour of the day right there. First half hour of the day right there. Look at this first half hour of the day, down and up. And then it sold off throughout the rest of the day, oh, down and up, the first half hour of the day. And then midday, we had a sell-off yesterday. But love the way it recovered giving us that nice wick. Once again today, first half hour of the day, trying to run stops. So the stop hunters are definitely in force, but we keep pushing and closing up near the highs. I like that. As long as we keep doing that, uh, we are good to go. Now, I mentioned we might talk about maybe adjusting some stops. RGLD was the stock of the week last week, trade of the week, RGLD, if I could type RGLD. Um, gold's doing well. Uh, gold continues to do well. We had um, a bit of a pullback, but it was not stopped out when the gold uh, RGLD trade was made. Uh, it was made with a stop down in this area, I believe. I don't know for sure, but we got uh, the move we were looking for on Monday. Uh, we said buy it on the open. That, um, that, if you recall, that one came out pre-market. Said doesn't matter if it's gapping up; it wants to go. It did. It, the stop hunters did not get anywhere near our stop and we're back near up near highs. So what can we use to raise our stop? Well, I'm going to use the prior breakout here of this green line. So for those of you that are in RGLD, let's move the stop up right here to around 53 area because we came back and tested that. That's where the breakout was. 
I don't think we're going to come back and test these areas. If we do, then it's kind of a, a, a small loss, but we've uh, reduced our risk by bringing a trailing stop up. We don't want this thing to roll back over and get back down into this congestion. Definitely not. Uh, IBB was the other one from two weeks ago. Not a whole lot of reason to get out of IBB. Uh, we got into it back here at these moves. I think this green line is actually uh, the trigger line. Um, came back, tested it, bounced back off. I think that whatever stop we had in IBB was probably down in these areas, can now be moved back up to where this line we, we just bounced off of. Um, so I'd call it like around the 271 area. You know, I won't give you an exact stop. You guys got to figure that out yourself. But if this price action rolls back over and tests these lows again, then the trade's are broken. It didn't follow through. It didn't do what we had hoped it would do. So again, thanks guys for that reminder to talk about the trade of the week. I got so enamored in showing you my process for trying to simplify things using the Trade Ideas software to try and find the what and the where. So hopefully that was uh, an exercise that uh, will be a benefit to you guys. Again, I know it can be a, a daunting, um, you know, the market itself can be daunting with all the options and all the opportunities we have throughout the day. It's very easy to get you stuck chasing your tail. Um, but hopefully going through this drill of just quietly doing your homework and setting price alerts will give you a full day the following days because, you know, you're going to have stuff coming at you. And the stuff that's coming at you has been pre-selected and curated uh, by you prior to the day. So whatever you can do to help yourself, uh, chance favors the prepared mind. That is the, uh, that is the thought. The best webinar ever. Thanks, Don. I know you've been to a few webinars too, so that means something. <laughs> All right, guys, my turn to run here. Uh, Scott's going to come in and give you some unique uh, promotional codes uh, today. You know, TI Pro is a great program, but, you know, put the ring on Holly's finger. Take it to uh, the next level. That's where all the good stuff is, and all the good stuff is going to continue to come, especially those price alerts. And we're trying to figure out how to make a really cool value proposition for you guys uh, to benefit on some price alerts that are put together by seasoned traders. So stay tuned for that. Hey, All right, Steve, Scott. Steve, real quick here, okay. I hate to butt in, but uh, could you quickly recap those three steps that you addressed, you know, in, in the central uh, methodology that you use real quick? Sure. Uh, the three steps are the uh, price, um, um, my, my trend change lubricant or the bearish and engulfing are top list. So this is where we're drawing our data from um, using uh, the charts to uh, configure where we might want to set up an alert and then using our price alerts. You know, it's the one, two, three, the price alerts, the charts, and the alerts. Now, I have to include Holly in those alerts because that's what Holly is. However, we never really know what Holly is going to bring to us, so we can't start setting price alerts prior to. But what we can do is on those trade arounds, especially like the one I talked about earlier where it was only up two cents on the day but wound up running uh, 70 cents. This one right here, PVTB. You know, this would be the kind of thing that, you know, it maybe if, if you did get out and you said, oh, geez, why did I get out? Because well, Holly got out. Well, if this thing breaks back above these tight range levels, that's a place to bring in the triad using the price alerts and using Holly as your catalyst and using the charts to try and guide your, uh, your eyeball. So that's the holy triad, the holy trinity. Uh, we try and keep it simple. That's the best way to do it. Um, Scott, let them know how they can save some money on this. Yeah, excellent. Uh, first, let's go through the pricing just in case there's some people that don't understand that. So slide five, please. And then, yeah, uh, let me get that up for you here real quick. And then I got the 420 stuff and the uh, and then the regular weekly specials for the webinar. That's almost there. One more. There we go. Yeah. Um, so our core plan as a as a software company, where software is a service company, is monthly. Um, it's a it's a monthly rate. It's ninety nine per month. It includes all your real time data, exchange fees, your charting, a full hour of one on one training with screen sharing. Um, all just ninety nine a month, and there's no contract. Uh, the same deal for the eight eighty eight per year, except you save a whole bunch. Uh, now to get access to the AI price limit alerts. Um, also, our back testing module requires purchasing the AI strategy uh, license. It's a one-time $1,100 cost. Uh, that's the regular cost, and it lets you back test the entire market using the odds maker, optimize your own strategies with no programming, or use Holly, the AI, to find everything that's performing in the market right now that our system has turned up. 
So because today's 420, I've got a special offer that's only good until tomorrow morning. Now the best way to see it is to go to the link that you see right there or just click on uh, the download uh, PDF in your GoToWebinar panel. I put a nice little PDF in there, helps you, uh, you just click through on the links right from that. Uh, but if you go to bit.ly slash 420day with capitals, capital D-A-Y, you go to a page where you can click through to purchase any of these, uh, some of them without even using a product code, like the combo package that we, uh, it has a complete year of trade ideas and the lifetime AI license that is a retail nine, 1988 price. You save over $500 and get it for just $1420. That's uh, $1,420. Uh, lifetime odds maker AI, you know, that's, that's what you get. And you don't even need to use a code. Just go to that bit.ly link. It takes you to the page. And then you can click through to get that deal. It's coming down tomorrow. All these offers that you see on the page right now are coming down tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, you can get your first month for just $42. That's 42.0, 4.2.0. Uh, you can get your first year of trade ideas. Save a whole bunch off of the 888 price uh, for just uh, $704.20. Or you can use the product code that's good until Friday that I'm going to show you on the next page too. That's Holly420, and that lets you get the AI uh, license for just 770. So this code that you see here uh, is our webinar code. It's Holly420. It's all capitals, and this is good till Friday. The other one saves you a little bit more. Only good until tomorrow morning uh, to go to that link. This one is good until the end of business on Friday, and it saves half off your first month. So you get the first month at 49. Although if you get in using the uh, 420 stuff uh, before tomorrow morning, that's only 42. Um, use this code. You get 20% off your entire year. First year, and it's 710 on instead of 888. Or you get the odds maker 30% off, uh, 770 lifetime. Uh, again, this one's good until Friday. The other thing we showed you is good only until tomorrow morning at 10. And then um, we also have a this discount code, Holly420, also works on a regular combo package. Uh, saves you over 500 bucks right away. You can get it for 1480. But if you act now before uh, tomorrow morning at 10 and go to that bit.ly link that I showed you in the other slide, you can get it for 14. 20, so you save an extra 60 bucks. But go to this link, bit.ly slash AIHolly, all caps. That gets you to a page where you can go ahead and click through and purchase and get it all for 1480. Uh, again, uh, that code, Holly420, is good until Friday. Uh, download the PDF that's attached to the um, to the webinar, and uh, you can get all this information right at your fingertips right there. Any questions at all, email us, info at trade-ideas.com or steve at trade-ideas.com. Um, you know, any, the uh, recording of this webinar will be up later tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, and uh, you should get an email reminder a little bit later tonight or tomorrow morning uh, with all this info, too. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Steve. Good webinar. Um, all right. Yeah. Sounds good. See you have guys a, next Wednesday. Yeah. Have a good evening, everyone, and hope to see a bunch of you in tomorrow's trading studio. Jamie's trading studio, you should get an email invite uh, some point later tonight or early tomorrow morning. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll be there, too. All right. See you guys. Bye.